How y'all doing out there? This is Pete over at DIY Auto School and I'm going to show you an item that everybody should have when they go to paint a car, a bumper cover, a door, a fender, anything and everything that you paint. I'm going to show you something that should be one of the most necessity necessary items that you have on your spray gun. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. Okay, so I got my spray gun already. What I'm getting ready to do, I'm getting ready to do some paint work on a 1955 Volkswagen Beetle. Now, of course, this is an inside-out job. We're going to do the best we can do. And the thing that I always do first is I go ahead and try to paint on the Volkswagen Beetles when it's an inside-out job. I'll go ahead and paint the engine compartment, the complete trunk area, and then at the same time, I'll go ahead and paint the back side of the hood. So when you're doing these type of paint jobs, you got a lot of action going on. It's a two, three, four, five day paint job. And just yesterday, which was an all day situation yesterday, I painted all of the meticulous little pieces that go to that vehicle. And you can see them all hanging right here. So that was an all day job prepping all these little pieces up and painting them. So when you're doing a lot of painting such as this, you're using different spray guns, you're using different clears, you're using different reducers, you're cleaning your guns out constantly. You got fluids of all kinds running in and out of your spray gun. And it's very important to protect your air going into the spray gun itself so you don't get any fisheye, any reactions of any type whatsoever and everything lays down as smooth as possible. Now, of course, the first place that all that starts is with a good, high-quality, um, high-end regulator such as this. Now, this is a DeVelbus brand, and this has a built-on adjustable air regulator with a gauge. This is a water and oil trap filter. And before you go any further on painting anything, you should have something of this kind hooked to your compressor as your out situation. Very, very important. If you're getting fisheye, if you're getting paint reactions of any type whatsoever, if you're getting a lot of orange peel action and, and what have you, you need to upgrade to a situation like this because your problems will never be solved. Another situation is, is the air hose that you use. Now, you should always have a dedicated air hose that is for painting only. Does that make sense? And you should have at least a maximum of a 50-foot air hose, no more than 50 feet. And the reason I say that is because the way that I paint cars. I adjust my air pressure at the wall. I do not do it at the spray gun. So you got to compensate for the length of the hose, how long it takes to go from the hose to the spray gun, and you need to calculate what the air pressure drop's going to be. Now, I've been doing this a long time. I know exactly what the air pressure drop is. If I have it 60 at the wall, it's going to be 40 at the gun. If I have 45 at the wall, it's going to be approximately 30, 32 at the gun. So I've already calculated, and that's something that you got to just, you know, hit and miss, 
and, and, and check and double check and, and get your calculations down. There's no way to really figure it out. It depends on what kind of spray gun you're using and, and what kind of air pressure you're putting th from there to here and this, that, and the other. Another reason we want to stick with an air hose that is dedicated to painting only is that we're not continuously using the air hose on anything and everything that comes into our shop or garage. Treat your air hose, your painting air hose, like you would your spray gun. That way you know that the hose is clean, it ain't got no moisture or no uh, oil inside the lines, and you know that it's specifically used for painting only, and that's all I use it for. So that gets us to the most important situation that we can tackle by getting an awesome, perfect paint job, and that's filterization from the gun, the point of contact where the air plugs into the gun, to the nozzle where the paint comes out. This is where it's the most crucial and most important to keep that air that's going into your spray gun as clean, 100% pure as possible. Now we already went over the wall unit, the regulator on the wall, the filtration system. We already went over the air hose, but the most important thing is a filter at the end of your gun going in. Now everybody knows what this is, it's a little ball filter. It's an awesome item to use, it's good for approximately 5 or 10 sprays, and then it's trash. They cost approximately anywhere from 2 to $4, depending on where you get them. And another thing is, depending on the brand that you use, is how long this is going to last and how good it performs. Now this happens to be a uh, Harbor Freight, and I think it was 89 cents for one of these Harbor Freight, and I used that on this particular gun right here, all right? And I took that off to show it to you, and it screws on to the bottom of the spray gun just like that. And now we have a filter that will trap our oil and our grease and possibly moisture from going into our spray gun and out of our nozzle and mixing with the paint. We got 100% pure air. Now the reason I only use this, this is my heavy duty primer gun. This would be used for uh, polyester primer and super build primer and possibly even spray on Bondo. This is the gun that I use. I don't get, I don't have $900, uh, $2,000 HVLP spray guns that I spray primer out of. I buy this particular gun, when it gets old and abused, I throw it in the trash and I go buy another one. This is for primer only, that's it. Same with the filter. And the reason I say same with the filter is because I use a totally different filter system on my guns that I use for paint and clear. So this is the spray gun that I used last night to spray all the little pieces. And if you look under my hand right here, that's the filter I'm talking about. This is called a motor guard air filter. It actually goes directly to the inlet on your spray gun and it also tells you when the filter needs to be changed. What you're looking at here is the best 100% accurate throwaway disposable filter that you can purchase for your spray gun. I'm going to go ahead and remove that because that's what we're talking about today is this item right here. We're going to put my touch-up gun back there. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove the air inlet. Now I also adjust air right here if I'm doing like quickie paint jobs or something. But most of the time this will stay open. What the deal is people, and this is very important. I see a lot of people ask questions. Why do I got fisheye? What is this? What happened here? Why did my paint wrinkle? Um, I just got done spraying this and it looks like crap. And everybody always focuses on you don't have your gun right, uh, your gun pressure is wrong, your, your, your volume is you're spraying out too thick, um, you got the wrong nozzle and tip on there, go to this tip, use a number two instead of a number four. No one ever, ever, ever mentions this right here. Never. I've never ever in my life seen anybody say your problem is that. 
you're not using the proper filter on your gun. Or if you are using a filter, like that one, it's old and full of oil and grease and moisture, and it's mixing with the paint. This right here is your number one cause of all paint issues that you are going to have toward a reaction. And that includes fisheye, that includes wrinkles, paint wrinklage, that includes blistering, and anything else that might occur while you have meticulously and, and hard labored worked on that vehicle to get it to the stage that you have. So this is our old filter right here, okay? And I don't know if you can see in there, but that's actually pink. It's like a, a bright, hot pink. And the weight of this is very heavy. When I say heavy, it actually weighs probably double of what a brand new one weighs. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this right here so you can see that in the camera. Let's go ahead and put that there because I want to show you the situation. Now I've been using this filter, and you're probably not going to be able to use it as long as me, but I've been using that filter for six months, maybe eight months. And the reason is, is because I got a very, very expensive air system throughout my whole shop. That air regulator that I just showed you, that air regulator, the orange one over there, that thing cost 220 bucks. I got three of those in my shop, and then in my paint booth building, I got close to $3,500 worth of air filter systems in there. But I always continuously, no matter how good my filter system is on the wall, I always continuously, 100%, use one of these filters right here. So the filter that I'm talking about is the mini decastant dryer. All right, this is the most high-end, the most advanced technology that you will be able to buy in air filter systems at the gun itself. This is made by MotorGuard. It cost approximately, when I bought this one, it was like $8. That was several years ago. I bought like 10 or 12 of them. Right when I moved to Moab, Utah, I stockpiled up on them. They're probably about 12 or 13 bucks now. But what you're looking at here, if you look inside there, you can see that that is purple. It's not pink. This is a self-contained. It tells you when your filter needs changed. It's dummy proof. It's 100% accurately perfect to use to get rid of all those issues that you're having. So the first thing that you're going to do when you get your filter out of the package, you're going to go ahead and remove the end caps. There's one on each end. All right. There's, so you got to have a pair of needle nose pliers because even my friend Pete forgot to take that out one time and I was freaking out like, what did I do wrong? Why isn't this thing working? Something's wrong with my gun. And then once you take out the end caps, you're ready to go ahead and screw that onto your spray gun. So what I do before I screw it onto my spray gun, I go ahead and put my air nipple on there. Now once again, I have a little controller here. You don't need that if you use the wall. I use it a lot. I do different variant stuff. So I have one of these on there because I might use my spray gun in my shop and then again I might use it in the paint booth so I do a lot of different stuff but what you want to do is you want to screw that on there and you want to get it on there nice and tight not too tight but nice and tight where this is not leaking the next thing you want to do is you want to take your spray gun and you want to put it on the bottom just like this very simple and very easy and you want to screw it on there tight enough where it's not going to leak air but on the other hand loose enough so you can remove it if you're like me and you use several different spray guns I use the Binks number no. 7, I use my SATA I use my SB5000, I use my Iwata I got a lot of spray gun action going on and I got that filter to protect me there's really nothing else to say. Um, I mean, I could read you some information, general information. Uh, the disposable 
decantant filter is designed to minimize painting failures by removing oil, aerosol, and any moisture that might condense in the hose. You see what I said? The hose. Um, the hose downstream of the wall mounted filter. This unit will provide clean dry all during its effective life. I took you through the whole system of how to protect your air all the way down to the last item which is right here. This is it. When those little purple uh, beads turn hot pink, it's done. It served you well. Throw it in the trash, get another one. This is what you want right here, okay? Where's it at? Motor guard. Do you see that? That's it. Okay, here. Let me show you my spray gun. Over here, here. Let me do it this way. There you go. Okay, motor guard. All right, use it. It's a done deal. I showed you where all your fucking problems are coming. I just showed you and answered all the millions of questions that say, why this, why that, why, why me? Why me, why me, why is this happening? Why do I got this, what, what's this problem? There's your fucking answer, right there. Just like that. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.